everyone, welcome back to You Know Who. I'm your host, Brian Hines, and welcome to Spyfall Part 2. Now, if you join me for Spyfall Part 1, we learned the Master is back. Uh, there are these weird white aliens, not, you know, Caucasian, but actually white. I mean, they're like an absence of anything but white. And uh, it's, they're it's alien spies, and they're going after all the other human spies that are out there, and we're not sure why, and we don't know what's going on, but it's happening, and we're just going to have to live with it. Is this the master after Misty? Now, is this the master after Missy, or is it, she implied right before she died that there was a master between her and John Sim. Is that who this is? I don't know. Let's see if we get any answers. We probably won't get any, like, continuity answers like that, but we'll hopefully find out what these aliens are after and what the master is doing, and, uh, oh, by the way, everything the doctor knows is a lie. So let's jump right into Season 12, Episode 2, Spyfall, Part 2. Hi, Doctor. Meanwhile, in a haunted oh. forest on the set of Harry Potter. How are you doing? Good. Don't panic. Uh, their ship doesn't have a nose anymore. Their plane... Don't panic. Their plane doesn't have a nose anymore and they're crashing. Signals? Synapses? Synapses? Yeah, synapses. Oh, I hope it's all over. I hate being inside livers. People always get so offended. Why are you doing in my liver again? Hello? <sighs> that I did not expect. Sure all this will pass. I shall be recovered momentarily. Welcome aboard. No one! Okay! I'll see you in there! Let out! Let out! Oh, ow. Let them out! Let them out! <laughs> We go through you and arrive in your realm. Well, I say realm is not planet, not really a void, a separate dimension. Are we beyond our, my universe? What my nose if I had one? saying makes sense to me. They can't have survived. You told me everything was foolproof. What's not masterproof. Name? Watch your tone, Mr. Barton. I'm not your employee. So let's get moving. Is nobody gonna ask how the doctor got on there and put some plaques in a whole video to save them? As well as an app on Ryan's phone. I'm tracking intel on three people. As soon as you can. I guess not. Who's okay, let's we'll roll with it. Time travel. Timey wimey. You're safe, Doctor. See the incredible shrinking device. Want to be smaller, ladies? You can. Ooh. The original master used to do that all the time. Zap people and shrink them down, killing them inside. Call me by my name. Master. Beg your pardon. Master. Holy oh, you love. Master. Pseudo masochistic implications now that she's a woman, he's a man again. By the way, I bring news from home. Down, Doctor! Ooh. That is not designed for use by a young lady. Nothing is, and yet I find myself more than capable. Yeah. Hand grenade. Do you have an Ada? Babbage. Charles Babbage. Charles Babbage. Yes. So this must be My a difference, difference engine. Oh, you you know of it? Uh, just in passing. As yet unfinished. I used to it shop for video computer video games at Babbage's. Quadratic equations. I really liked that Babbage, store too. Then EP bought them out and then Games Up bought them out and it's a whole thing. Of Lord Byron and Annabella Milbank, one of the great minds. I am Ada Gordon, madam. 1834. Of course you are. Well, maybe one day, who knows? You might meet Ada Lovelace, which is it's weird because I was everything. just watching. This isn't an accident. Ada Lovelace in Babbage's house. Your the James clues. Newton riff tracks important. thing, Jack and I'm Jill, is it Jack and something? It, yes, it's not and they're looking at a portrait of 
Ada Lovelace in a museum. Julian Jack was the movie. Mr. Babbage, you have seen the same form. Madam, those are my private notes. The master and the computer he invented was actually to help him win gambling <laughs> to figure out odds. With the same effect. No doctor has ever been able to diagnose the cause. Well, this doctor may be able to. A female doctor can't scoff, scoff, scoff. They've taken multiple times. What if the doctor doesn't come back? What if he never see her again? Then you all have to live your pathetic lives. Stop. Uh, what do we have at our disposal? Missile cufflinks. Well, I've, uh, I'll admit, I did keep a couple of those spy gadgety things. <laughs> laser shoe. Hey. Are you wearing the laser shoes? Laser shoes. I'm not. I've been doing it like the blow dart thing in Naked Gun too. Yeah, the pair of you got a couple of times. Should be more like. But so we've got some things that can cause damage. Paris, 1943. Oh no, it's a patrol. <sighs> Never be in France, Germany, Austria, Poland during the 1940s. A bad idea. A lot of them. That's a lot more. And there's three more. Look out! He's gone into Death Blossom mode. Three themes for our ride. You're new? Yeah. I should like to come out from the floor now. Oh. Uh, no, I'm just going to leave you buried under there. Who are you? He's the bearded lady, he's not! So he's in league with the Kasavan. Those creatures of light. I'd hope to get back to their home dimension. I like Kasavan melons. And then to the train. Sorry, gents, it's you who's getting down on the floor. <laughs> Laser shoe! Don't make Seriously, he's gonna actually shoe kill shoe. somebody, then feel like an idiot. That machine was a box office. It's also in the past. Yeah, the machine that stabilizes them in this dimension. What are you doing? She did say look for something anomalous. Anomalous. The device. You're the anomaly. Well, she is with her phone. A flip phone, really? Pulverized. Burned. Nuked. Is Gallifrey gone again? All of the above. What have you done? It's a message to the Brits, telling them how valuable you've been as a double agent. Sets up all this technology, kills his mother, the aliens come, kill all these spies because they're spies themselves. I'm still not sure what the end game is. Where does the DNA fit in? Kasavin? Technology? DNA? They're how are they all connected? Changing. <gasps> people to inhabit them. How much of that did you understand? The spies had human shells but they're alien on the inside so the Kasavans can move into those. That's, okay. that's what they're trying to do. Sorry, I think that might have been me. I'll admit, it was close. Yeah, is he okay? What was that? But I keep telling you. been through a lot today. Conspiracy. Listen, you lot. I've rigged the Silver Lady to exile you back to your own dimension. This planet's off limits. And it's his fault. The maker, master. Yeah? Bart and those creatures do the dirty work, and once they're done, I get rid of them, having destroyed your precious human race in the process. Win, win, win. Oh. That's your name. Don't wear it out. That's the trouble with modern technology. Oh. You never know when you're being spied upon. <laughs> Once again, hoisted on his own petard. I'm dropping him back in a sec. How did you manage to save our lives on a plane? A plane? Oh, I forgot. Come on! <laughs> Going to Galfrey? Let's go to Galfrey. Again? What the F? 
but the actual F. When I said someone did that, obviously I meant I did. Yeah, you know everything about us. And we know nothing about you. It's not equitable. Fine. The master was one of my oldest friends. We went very different ways. Questions? Lots. Can we visit your home? Right Another time. It's gonna be the meta plot for this season. Okay, so if you're watching this, you know that uh, I previously reviewed part one on the last episode, and then since we've just watched part two, I'm going to review the whole two parts of Spyfall at once. And uh, I enjoyed it. Um, Chibnall seems to do different kinds of stories. There's usually, like, maybe there's the character development story where one or two characters get themselves moved along a little. Or there's the big action-adventure episode, and this was definitely uh, in the latter of these two stories. Spyfall as a whole was kind of more big explosions and dangerous uh, events, and the Master's back, and that's always a big deal. Um, this is uh, the first time it really feels like he's working on the meta plot of Doctor Who. He's kind of he's kept it low-key for the first season, no famous monsters, just the Doctor the companions and setting that relationship up and having small time adventures then he brought the Daleks back last year for that Christmas special now it's a new year and we're going to start getting into Gallifrey and stuff and he's going to start tweaking the origin of the Time Lords it sounds like which <sighs> the Time Lords have had it rough ever since <laughs> Russell T Davies brought the series back but we finally got them back and now the Masters apparently wiped them all out we'll see about that but um, there's going to be a new origin for the Time Lords is what I'm taking from uh, what he was saying about everything about the Timeless Child, which I believe was mentioned last year, but it's been a while since I've seen those episodes, so I couldn't say for sure which episode, but I, they showed a little clip that I know was from a previous episode. Sasha Dewan is the new master. We know Sasha mostly from uh, Iron Fist, where he played Davos, Danny's friend, and then rival in season two, uh, and he was... He was good in that show. If it, everything was good in that show, it was never great. That was the problem with Iron Fist. He plays a secret agent as straightforward as he can, but then there's that switch, and he's what, the the moment we're going to have he's so much fun because the master has that childlike side to him that goes all the way back to Roger Delgado watching. You know, he's watching uh, children's programming, and they did that with uh, John Sim watching Teletubbies. You know, he just delights. And he's like he's like the only child who's grown up selfish. He just delights in pushing over other kids' blocks and kicking down their sandcastles. You know, various masters have different degrees of evil. Missy was about as close to good as the master ever got, uh, and she did. At the end of the Doctor Falls, she told John Sim she wasn't sure if she becomes if John would regenerate into her, or there was one in between. So I'm not sure where this Master Fall... I'll, I'll assume that it's Missy regenerates into this new version of the Master after the camera's cut off in the Doctor Falls, but, um, you know, maybe not. So, But that's not really germane to the story. But Sasha did a good job with this once he got to be the Master, all kind of like the evil, but the, the hamminess of the Master was there too, which I enjoyed. And I'm glad they brought back the tissue compression. That was always kind of an integral part of the Master... Going back to Roger Delgado, going back to Anthony Ainley, he had this like little, instead of a sonic screwdriver, he had like a little wand that like he would blast people with and he'd shrink them down. And the massive size change always killed them. As for the cast, well, this was not a big character development episode. I'm glad we checked in on them and we kind of see that maybe the young kids are kind of putting their lives on hold to do this Doctor Who stuff. You know, the Ryan's friends are wondering where he is all the time. He has his family and mentor wondering, you know, why she's not as committed to her job as she was before. <sighs> Graham doesn't have anything else. So not a, not too much character development. Everyone had stuff to do. Graham's the comic relief. Uh, Ryan and Yaz get put in danger. Uh, the whole laser 
shoe thing. Man, I wish that had been funnier. That was kind of stupid. Where he's like, he's just jumping up and down. You know, you have to kind of aim these things, but somehow they're just going over the people's heads. I'm like, you know, there should have been like, you know, and I'm putting my foot down, stop, bless somebody, kill him. You know, I don't want Graham to kill anyone, obviously, but, you know, it seemed like he was pretty haphazard with his laser shoe, which is not really something I ever thought I'd say, but there you go. Overall, the acting was fine. Stephen Fry, hey, the great Stephen Fry. He was, uh, it was a pleasure to see him in this show. Uh, I kind of wish they'd done a little more with him, but then he gets killed right away, which I suppose is necessary. I, Unit and Torchwood, the Time Lords are all dead, so he's once again trying to isolate the Doctor from her old support systems, perhaps, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure it's even necessary. Uh, Lenny Henry as Barton, and Lenny was in the third season of Broadchurch, and he was fine. He played the part you know, as well as you can with any sinister businessman. We finally figured out what the White Energy Beans' plan was to possess people and take over Earth that way, I guess. And it just seemed odd that they were doing it across time and space, but that was a whole dimensional, timey-wimey thing, okay. But it also seemed strange. They said they were all spies, which doesn't make sense for an entire species, but if they're all working in concert to covertly take over a planet, yeah, then I get it. And then Jody uh, as a 13th Doctor. This is a little more subdued. Last season she was like, oh, everything's new and wonderful. And here she was a little more in the moment because, again, it was that kind of episode. But also I enjoyed the interplay with her and Sasha as the Master where she's like, oh, you're lying. That's what I thought. But then she goes to Gelfer and Gelfer really has been wiped out. And in that final scene you can see it weighing on her. But she And she finally opens up to the companions about who she is, where she's from, which I think is an important step in any Doctor Companion relationship. They have to know she's an alien. They have to know she's from a planet called Galfrey, Time Lord. And it's, they had to get that out there now, right away, because that's going to be important in the coming season, I can already tell. Some of the character motivations were a little murky. I'm not sure this needed to be two episodes. It had to be two episodes so we could have that first episode break with the reintroduction of the Master and give everyone a chance to catch their breath before we got to the second half of the story. Or the pacing of this episode and some of the character motivations weren't great, but uh, probably like a solid C plus, B minus story when you put both episodes together. Uh, the new master, I enjoy it. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does. And uh, I thought he and Jody had good chemistry. Let's see where it was kind of classic master episode. He goes in, makes deals with a bunch of people, then gets screwed when his evil machinations get thrown in his face. Uh, plus plus tissue compression, which is... Anytime there's a nod to the old series, I'm happy. All right, uh, thank you very much for joining me, my friends. We'll be back here next week for the third episode of Season 12. Until then, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my Patreon at patreon.com backslash lastangrygeek, all one word. Until next time, my friends, this is You Know Who, and I'm your host, Brian Hines.